Don't play Genshin Impact at 3 a.m. Seriously, please don't. It was a long bad idea on my part, although at this point I don't know what happened anymore. My account was probably hacked or something. I refuse to believe in any possible paranormal explanations, but you never know. Okay, here's the story. I have my schedules very close to each other. Normally I go to sleep at 6 and wake up at 12. In the day I'm busy and I play at night. Last night I noticed that the clock struck 3 a.m. Then I remembered that when I was a kid they used to say don't do X things at 3 a.m. because something bad will happen. Well I had no better idea than to say to myself hmm what would happen if I open Genshin Impact now? I did it and everything went normally and well since I opened it I got ready to play for a while. So I started the Dainsleaf quest. The one where we have to investigate the statue of the seven that was stolen. The mission went normally at first. So I entered the domain of the statue to continue the quest. As the game loaded I looked at the clock. 3.33. Ironic I thought. So the game loaded. I put my headphones back on and realized that the music in the background was abnormally creepy. It was only one composition of a piano playing slow and melancholic notes, at the same time slightly creepy, gothic you could say, but I didn't pay attention to it, I thought it was just a setting of the domain. And oh boy, did it suit him. I kept moving through the domain, but I noticed that as I went, the music became more creepy, in addition to the fact that the screen was acquiring a black and white filter. Again, I thought that was just a mission. Another strange thing was that there were no enemies, so I just walked all the way through the domain until I reached the statue of the seven. When the cinematic started, that's when everything became very strange. The emissary of the abyss appeared, Lumin, Dainsleaf, but the dialogue were different from what they had read they were. I will try to reproduce the cinematic as best as possible. The music paused slightly, leaving only the piano notes and the distance as Lumine watched Aether and Dainsleaf stood behind the player, just as the emissary stood behind Lumine. Then the lights went on. Because you did? Why? Why did you leave me? So many years. So many years. Then the disturbing scene started. Lumine's eyes broke the black and white tone of the screen. They began to turn red as if they were bloodshot. His voice started to sound glitchy. But now, now I can see you. Now I have the power. Then Lumine slashed her sword and in one move she sent a beam of light at Dainsleaf which pierced his chest. Blood started to pour on the ground, which again broke the bank and black, clearly seeing the intense red while the rest was grey. So I was very shocked. Very loud screams began to sound from Dainsleaf, as if they were actually killing someone in front of me. Soon the shrieks began to sound glitchy, as text boxes with bugged characters began to appear, while the text boxes flickered intermittently. Finally, a brief loading screen was seen which led to the fight with the emissary. Lumin was in the fight as well, rushing from above the statue as Dainsleaf bled to death on the ground. Also, I noticed that each hit of the emissary caused the character to release blood and his level was considerably more inflated. My team was confirmed by Amber, Jean, Kaya and Lisa. I was using Jean to heal my already weakened team but the emissary charged at her and with her spear I could see how it pierced her chest from the back to the front. He then stepped back causing Jean to fall and start screaming as her life bar rapidly started to sink. Blood spilling onto the ground and finally evaporating with her usual death animation. I changed Kaya who was sewered by the emissary. Amber decapitated. I could hear Lumin laughing as the emissary sliced Lisa in half. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, I was simply stunned. Then another cinematic started. Ether was on the ground, crawling over the corpses of her friends as she wept grotesquely as Lumin approached her, laughing. Your friend died, she said, because you did. So another loading screen. I was with only Ether on the team on Mondstadt. I opened the character menu. Kaya, Jean, Amber and Lisa were weakened. I tried to revive them with food, but a message came out that I had never heard. This character is definitely dead. I freaked out. I couldn't believe anything that was happening. So I ran to the rising stage of the seven. I tried to heal the characters with it, but when I tried, another message appeared. It seems that the gods have abandoned you. I just couldn't believe what was happening. I went back to Mondstadt looking to buy more food to try to revive the characters, but 
I noticed that Saur was not there. Neither was any NPC. After a while, I found him. All the NPCs were gathered in front of the church of the Favonius. I ran over there. Then I saw that there were four coffins in the middle of the square. As I got closer, I saw that Kaya, Lisa, Jean and Amber were inside. People cried and screamed. Then an NPC came over. They died. They died, he yelled in despair. This is your fault, Traveler. You came and brought only misfortune. Because you did. Then Barbara left the church. She came closer. She was crying. Tears could be seen falling from her eyes. My sister, she said, before collapsing in front of the coffin. He deserves punishment, Rosaria said in front of the crowd. Then everyone violently approached. The dialogues closed and I took control of Ether again. I saw that above them were life bars. And by hitting the citizens, the blood came out of their bodies. Arms flew, blood, everything. But soon, I was outnumbered. They pounced on Ether as I witnessed them tear him into pieces. The blood was flying, the screams were downright terrifying. I couldn't take it anymore, and I tried to turn off the computer, but it didn't respond. Attempting, Paimon said, Why did you? I unplugged it. I haven't turned it on since. Me? I don't know why I did it.